all those that do, we rise and face the east. Five fingers on the left, two fingers on the right. Repeat after Sister Farasha Bey. Allah. Allah. The Father of the Universe. The Father of, the universe. The Father of love. Father of love. Truth. Truth. Peace. Peace. Freedom. 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 And justice. And justice. Allah is my protector, my guide, my guide and, my and my salvation, by night, by night and by day, and by day. Do us do us do us do Amen. Islam. Islam. Now I have the reciting of our divine constitution and bylaws that was prepared for all free national beings on this round. Islam. This particular one was prepared for Moorish Americans, for their drill society. Islam? Yes, sir. Act 1. The Grand Sheik and the Chairman of the Moorish Science Temple of America is empowered to make law and enforce laws with the assistance of the Prophet and the Grand Body of the Moorish Science Temple of America. To assist the Grand Sheik is to assist the Grand Sheik in all affairs if he lives according to love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice, and it is known before the members of the Moorish Science Temple of America. Act 2. All meetings are to be open and closed promptly according to the Circle 7 and love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. Friday is our holy day of rest because on a Friday the first man was formed in flesh and on a Friday the first man departed out of flesh and ascended into his father God Allah. For that cause, Friday is the holy day for all Muslims all over the world. Act 3. Love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice must be proclaimed and practiced by all members of the Moorish Science Temple of America. No member is to put in danger or accuse falsely his brother or sister on any occasion at all. They may harm his brother or sister because Allah is love. Act 4. All members must preserve these holy and divine laws, and all members must obey the laws of the government. Because by being a Moorish American, you are a part and parcel of the government and must live the life accordingly. Act 5. This organization of the Moor Science Temple of America is not to cause any confusion or to overthrow the laws and constitution of the government, but to obey hereby. Act 6. With us, all members must proclaim their nationality, and we're teaching our people their nationality and their divine creed, that they may know that they are a part and parcel of the said government, and know that they are not Negroes, colored folks, black people, or Ethiopians. Because these names were given to slaves by slaveholders in 1779 and lasted until 1865 during the time of slavery. But this is a new era of time now, and all men now must proclaim their free national name to be recognized by the government in which they live and the nations of the earth. This is the reason why Allah, the great God of the universe, ordained Noble Jew Ali, the prophet, to redeem his people from their sinful ways. The Moorish Americans are the descendants of the ancient Moabites who inhabited the northwestern and the southwestern shores of Africa. Act 7. All members must promptly attend their meetings and become a part and parcel of all uplifting acts of the Moor Science Temple of America. Members must pay their dues and keep in line with all necessities of the Moor Science Temple of America. Then you are entitled to the name of faithful. Husband, you must support your wife and children. Wife, you must obey your husband and take care of your children and look after the duties of your household. Sons and daughters must obey father and mother and be industrious and become a part of the uplifting of fallen humanity. All Moorish Americans must keep their hearts and minds pure with love and their bodies clean with water. This divine covenant is from your holy prophet, Noble Dua Ali, through the guidance of his father, God Allah. Islam. Islam. Now we're going to have the reading of our Quran questions from all his children. Who made you? Allah. Allah. Well, who is Allah? Allah, Allah is the of the universe. Can we see him? No. no. Where's the nearest place we can meet him? In the heart. How did he make us? Definitely. Art thou made? Islam? Islam. 
who was the founder of the Moorish Science Temple of America? What year was he born? 1886. Where? North Carolina. Islam. It's the fact. Islam. Islam, me. I would suggest turning the air conditioning back on, please. And for those who can't hear, I would just suggest to move forward. I'll try to speak up as well. <laughs> what is his nationality? Morris American. Why are we Morris American? Because we're the descendants of Moroccans and born in America. What is your nationality? Morris American. What is your free national name? Morris American. Who are the Moors? Descendants of Moroccans and born in America. Yes. Now, according to the lesson, who are the Moors? According to the record, you want to say a lot of Haru? Uh, ancient Moabites who have it in northwest and south of the shores of Africa. Yes. It's wrong, man. It's the answer. That's right. It's wrong. For what purpose was the Moorish Science Temple of America founded? For the uplifting of the fall of humanity. How did the Prophet begin to uplift the Moorish Americans? By teaching them to be themselves. How many cells are there? Two. 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 Name them. High self and low self. What people represent the lower self? The agents who carry the gaps out of the whole city and those accept their teachings. What people represent the higher self? That's what it breeds. And I'll, I'll go with both answers. Um, what are their religion? Islamism. And what kind of religion is that? It's old time religion. And what does that religion represent? Peace. 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 No, peace with what? Peace with Allah and peace with man. Islam. Peace with Allah, peace with nature, and peace with oneself. Islam. And how old is that? A little 50,000 years old. Islam. What kind of flag is the Moors? It's a red flag with five point three star in the center. Which is our holy day? Friday. What act makes reference to that? No. Why is Friday the holy day? What planet represents Friday? No. The answer was already given. What is the modern name for Mobites? Rockets. What is the where is the Moroccan Empire? Northwest of Mexico. What is an empire? An empire is a complete uh, dominion, geographical areas, or multitude of areas. All right. Sorry, bro. Uh, I just want to say empire is a
Say it again. Long, we'll go with that too. Anyone else? Ms. Long, go to the mark. Stacy, Stacy, side one, Joe Station. All right. Like Bobby And are we currently under the jurisdiction of an empire? No. Okay, why? We're not because because we have debased ourselves and fallen for the constitution fold of, 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 of government and and and, and, and we've um, fallen from from our um, original divine creed and principles of our ancient forefathers and foremothers. All right. Brother Osman? Because uh, um, jurisdictions have been developed con individual countries on their own. Okay. And what what is the correct saying of that according to the record? The question is why don't we have an empire? Why we don't currently have an empire? According to the record. Yes. Let's arise and I give perfect praise to, to the Father God Allah for all things. I give honors to the Prophet Muhammad Ali. I give honors to all who are here on this day and, 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 and love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice for all. Peace. Because we have. We have accepted names and customs that are not of our own. So when, we, so when we accept these names, they're Negro, Black, Colored, and Ethiopian. We're, I'm, 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 we're, we're automatically not recognized for, for having an um, empire. Because as long as you accept names that delude to, to, to um, slavery, can't have an empire. All right. Does, does anyone have anything else to add to that according to the record? So, oh, we are a part of the North American Empire. No, according to the Quran, in the beginning of the Quran, it explains to all most Americans about the empire that once existed on how you got from Canaan to here. So wasn't the Moabites driven out the land? Joshua. All right. So when they were driven out of the land by Joshua, what what occurred? They received permission from the pharaohs of Egypt to settle in in that portion of Egypt. And in later years, they formed themselves kingdoms. And these kingdoms are called this day Morocco, Algiers. <coughs> Tunis and Tripoli, etc. So kingdom is subordinate to empire. Yes. So this is what occurred with the Moroccan Empire. And why it's not referred to as the Moroccan Empire anymore. And then from that time when they formed themselves kingdoms, through colonization, it further debased and went down to colonies, countries, ETC states, right. to what we have now. So that's why I asked those line of questions, because 
it goes down into jurisdictions and dominions as we call them today. We don't really use the word dominion too much, but we know them as states and countries and continents, which are your modern day terminology for the older terminology, which was kingdoms and empires. So, Okay, um, Grand Chief, if you don't mind, huh. I'd like to go back to the previous question. Who was an empire? All right. It's an extensive group of states or countries under a single supreme authority. The formal, um, formerly, especially an emperor or an empress. So, thank you. Well, So what is the modern name of Africa? Part and self, what is the modern name of Mexico? Africa. What is the title given to our ruler in Morocco? Sultan. Where do we get the name Jesus? From the East. Islam. And I'm going to stop there because that tells us a Moorish history lesson going into the geography, the history, the law, that is all embraced under that one umbrella. That's why I say you can never separate history and law, geography, it all runs together. When you say nationality, most people say, what's that, a religion you're talking about, Moorish American? And you're saying it, you're speaking of the subject matter of history, law. That's right. Religion is also added into that because religion is law order Go as well. But so what you're saying is, in a, in a whole nutshell, you're embracing the concept of all of these different categories. Yes. So this particular passage is very important for us to understand because if we're saying our nationality is Moorish American and that is based on being descendants, that means come down from. That's right. Moroccans, right, which is a political, geographical Absolutely. statement, right, born in America. So you're talking geography, you're talking law, you're talking history, all in the same nutshell. So it's important to understand them that way so we can express them, explain them that way. Because when a person asks you what is your nationality, that brings on a whole plethora of subjects that could be asked. So that's why... We have 101 questions that can all derive from what is your nationality. So if you engage in a conversation with someone and they ask what's your nationality, from that question, you can get hit with a plethora of questions to come from that one statement. Right. So you got to know that question from different questions that might arrive from it, association of questions coming from any plethora of subjects that we can go, you might have to know history, you might have to know, have to know mathematics, events, right. geography. No, There's no telling what you might have to encounter by, by engaging in a conversation based on that question, what is your nationality? Genealogy, all is important. That's why when I ask why we don't have a present empire and all that, you have to know that. It's very important. Because you can't say Moorish American without explaining the Moroccan Empire. When you talk of Mexum, you're talking about Moroccan Empire. That's right. So this explains Africa on how that was colonized. This explains why you have countries in Africa. This is all based on the Moroccan Empire. And then if you're teaching someone Number one question they might ask, well, why do I have to claim Moroccan descent? Why well, I got to say I'm a Moor? What if I'm something else? What if I was from another part of Africa that was not Morocco? And you'll have a hard time trying to explain to them that they're still a Moor if you don't understand the Moroccan Empire. Because the M Moroccan Empire, Empire embraced multiple countries in Africa. So regardless of what country you came from, they still was under the jurisdiction 
and dominion of the Moroccan Empire and under the rulership of, or i.e. under the jurisdiction of, which still what makes them Moorish or Moroccan. So Moroccan is not just subject to Morocco. But once again, when you talk in law, you got to be able to explain that. If if not, then it neutralizes your claim as being Moorish American. And that's why some people have a hard time understanding that they are Moorish American or Moroccan because they are thinking from that point of view that they could have came from somewhere else. So Moroccan might not be the, the right bloodline for them. And that's because they haven't encountered someone who to explain it properly to them. And that's why they run with that, that concept. And then you have people talking about they're going to take a blood test to find out what particular area that they were from. And then they allow the same people who enslaved them to give them a blood test to tell them their pedigree. And once again, from the lack of knowledge or the insufficiency of knowledge, you can't convince someone that they're not Negro, Black, and color because you didn't have the proper knowledge to do so. That's why it's important to study your lessons. And, you know, we try to get this information from different sources or authors out here. And you're not going to find that information clearly cut like you will find it coming from the source of a prophet because he was ordained by the great God to reveal that information to you. So that's once again understanding the difference between a prophet and an author of a book. Because an author of a book doesn't mean that their author is not bringing you information that's correct and true, but they're also going to bring you information that's false. And you're not knowing how to decipher between the two you might fall for the falsehood. So to, to really, to be able to stand on Moorish heritage or just history, period, you got to study the Prophet Noble Drew Ali's literature because that's the most accurate source of the law, the history, the genealogy, and the geography that we have to offer. And that's been proven. That's right. Islam? So what does Jesus mean? Jesus means justice. And that's important as well because you getting into saying you Moorish American, the first thing someone going to think is Muslim. So that's their first reality, that's, that's their first perception. And whatever they understand about Muslim is what they're going to hold you to until you're able to clear up their concept on that. So they're going to think religion, they're going to think Muslim to begin with. So now what you have to be able to do is clear up that person's concept because you know what they're thinking already. And the prophet gives us questions based on the subject matter. So although you might think that even studying or reading about Jesus is irrelevant to us because we're Moors, we got another thing coming. Because it has everything to do with it. Even just if it's clearing up someone's concept of Jesus. You still got to know it to be able to clear up somebody's concept of it. So people have been misled because they think they read the lessons. It sounds biblical. It sounds like it's coming from the Bible and things. Because that's what they're reading or that's how they're interpreting it. They think that they're being introduced to, to some form of Christianity. Or some mixture between that and Islam. So because of the lack of understanding, they're misled and disinterested in the matter. And they're looking for another school of thought to deal with. And once again, that's our problem. We're charged with correcting the concepts of people in general. We're charged with that. You can't allow someone to clear up their own concept. 
you already know that we all came from a, a, a state of being ignorant. So there's a portion of us that's still ignorant no matter where we're coming from. When you hear the ignorance, you have an obligation to try to clear it up, try to bring knowledge to the person, try to bring wisdom and understanding to the matter. That's our job as Moorish Americans. That's why it says once we get our nationality, our job is to teach others about their nationality. That, that's protocol with this. So don't just study it for yourself. And don't just love it for yourself, but also love it for the good it may be for others. That's right. Islam, the Islam? Islam. Yes. What's the difference between a Muslim and a Muslim? Islam, brother. Let me stay on my subject matter, please. Yes, but I, I explained that numerous amount of times. I have explained that subject matter numerous amount of times. So right now I want to deal with a, how it was presented to you. The general people, population, looks at Moorish or Moors as being Muslim. That's your number one encounter. So that's what I want to address. It's your number one encounter. And then for people who also think that they are or, or refer to themselves as Muslims, they might be disinterested in what you're saying because your literature has Jesus in it. And then explaining that, we must understand the prophecies, the genealogies of the prophecies. And once again, if you are considered a Muslim and that's what you profess, then you still should have an understanding of the genealogy of Jesus and Muhammad. Right. Because you can't call yourself a Muslim and, and, and profess or honor Muhammad without honoring Jesus. Even if that's what you profess, even from the Quran perspective, you got to give honor to Jesus if you give honor to Muhammad. So to just discredit Jesus as is irrelevant, that means you have the lack of understanding. From whatever point of view anyone is coming from. From the biblical, we, we must know the biblical teachings of Jesus. We must know the Quranic teachings of Jesus. So that you can be able to speak to people who are un under both umbrellas for their own clarity and understanding. This is why the nationality card, one of the reasons why the nationality card tells us that we honor all true and divine prophets. So no, at no time do we speak against true and divine prophets. And that also means that we must have a fundamental understanding of all true and divine prophets. So when we're communicating with people, regardless of what school of thought they come from, what understanding of the true and divine prophet that represents their religion, you should be able to give them a favorable reply. Because that's what we profess. So we have understanding about Buddha, his walks, his history. You understand? We can go into Krishna. We can go into Muhammad. We can go into Confucius because you're instructed to do so. You're instructed to have understanding about them. Russia, put that back. Put that back. Islam. So with being a Moorish American, and I'm not talking about bloodline, I'm talking about within proclamation and citizenship and studies, we should be able to explain all true and divine prophets. Because as a Moorish American, we embrace the idea that all religions are actually one. They're derived from one source. They're universal. We also embrace the idea of one God, one religion. 
So we understand that the prophecies also have a genealogy connection to them, dealing with science. So we're not out to lunch with what we're saying. When we someone call and talk about Buddha, Jesus, we don't say, "Oh man, I ain't, I ain't with that stuff," and you can't talk to me. We don't, we don't demonstrate like that. We're supposed to say, "Oh, all right, you're my brother, you're my sister." In fact, let's have a conversation about that. You understand? Because regardless of what religion you represent citizenship, law and order, dealing with a geographical area deals with citizenship and nationality. Regardless of what your religion is. So we can talk that, but we also need to talk nationality. How does your religion comply with nationality? And that's how you introduce the topic of nationality and don't get caught into religious controversy. Because we don't want to debate on religion. On religion is irrelevant. Once again, pure thought is one God, one religion. That's pure thought. If someone's religion does not teach that or embrace that principle, then they're not dealing with true religion. And regardless of what you call your religion or what you call the prophet of your religion, if that teachings or hadith doesn't embrace the concept of one God, one religion, then they're not a true true and divine prophet. So that's how you can eliminate people's teachings and schools of thought just by understanding science and oneness. So once again all this comes from the Quran questions and answers. You can study these. Hundred and one of them, right? Recorded 101 of them. That means there's more. But you have 101 to start with. So before you're looking for something else to study, you should all understand the Quran questions and answers. And your reference point to them is from the Quran. That's why they call it the Quran questions. So to understand where the answers come from, you gotta go into your Quran and study your Quran. So this how this is designed. And I know a lot of people get bored, you know, get so-called bored with it, but you should never be bored. A scientist is never bored. So a Moorish American being a scientist should never be bored. Understand? Because there's different dimensions to each question. So regardless of what you think you know, if you study that same thing that you say you know a little bit more you'll find out that you know something that you didn't know. Sit back, sit back. I don't know if you did So I'm going to go back to question number 31. It says, where is the mo the mo what is the modern name for Mobites? Moroccan. So this is very important because we're basing our theory, our statement, on the fact that we're descendants from the ancient Moabites. So if, if we're going to come from that perspective, then that means Moabites have to have some type of reputation behind it to be able to, it, to be considered as factual. That means Mobite has to be concrete. If not, someone might look at it as theory. Someone might look at it as that's your belief. Made up story. Or, the most modern thing somebody might say about it is that was just a biblical. That was just a, a biblical story. Somebody might challenge the fact that Moabite never existed. So they might say just the fact that you're deriving your thought based on being a Moabite means that you're a Christian because that's a Christianized story. That's what someone who is challenging you might say to you. 
So I'm presenting that to you because these are all the things that I've heard before and know that people said. So if you haven't encountered that challenge yet, what this means is be prepared for that challenge. So don't get caught not knowing how to answer that. That's why these line of questions is important because it helps you answer those questions. You know, we can know what the law says about this, what case laws say about this, what the rights say about this. All that's important, but remember, you have inalienable rights, which are God-given rights, divine rights, ETC, natural rights. You have substantive rights. Which are rights that's protected by the constitution of that uh, p uh, particular jural society or body politic. True. And then you have birth rights. What was referred to as birthright inheritance, which are rights that come through inheritance. Mm -hmm. And that's now dealing with genealogy. So once you start talking about, like the prophet says, the truth about your nationality and birth rights, then birth rights deals with the rights that you inherited through your ancestry, through your genealogy. That's right. So now you have to go into your genealogy, your inheritance, to see what rights come from that. That's right. And those are a little bit different from the other rights that we just spoke about. So rights have different classifications to it, and we, we need to know that. Because you got to know when to use a particular right, and what venue, meaning what establishment, what courtroom, what jurisdiction, what place to use certain arguments in. Because we speak about the word subject matter. That means the matter that's at hand, the subject that we're speaking about. So you will only mention an argument that applies to the subject matter. So when we're speaking about birthright, that comes through this line genealogy we're talking about, being descendants from the ancient Moabites. who were descendants of the ancient Canaanites. So whatever status they held in society will determine what birthrights did they give on, give off to their offsprings, That's right. to their future posterity? So we, so you have to know about the status of the Moabites. You got to know about the status of the Canaanites. You got to know what laws applied to the Moabites and what laws didn't apply to the Moabites. Or I even, if you just want to go back one gene and go to Moroccans. You got to know what was the status of the Moroccans that we talk about. Because if they say, if we're saying we're descendants of the Moroccans, then once again, the status of Moorish will be the status of Moroccans. So that means you got to know the laws of the Moroccans. That's why I ask you, what is your ruler in Morocco, Sultan? Because you got to know that. Because if you get caught not knowing who your ruler in Morocco is, then that also neutralizes your claim as being descendant of Morocco that's right. and being Moorish that's right. because that's showing that you have no leadership. Yes. Yes and no. All depending on what subject that you're speaking about, what question somebody asks you. Because the Mor Morocco is a political body politic of the Moroccan Empire. Mm -hmm. So it has its sovereignty as a political uh, nation state, or nation what they state. might call country, or what you might, what they might also refer to as the Kingdom of Morocco. It has its separate identity as a kingdom, but it was also under the jurisdiction and rulership of the Moroccan Empire. Just like, like the record tells us, Tripoli, Tunis, Algiers, Algiers, whatever the nation state might be, they still were subject to the Moroccan Empire. 
and that's once again how we get tripped up sometimes just isolating ourselves to Morocco and thinking that our dominionship just stops with Morocco. We go to chapter 47, it explains how the Moroccan Empire's dominion extended across the great Atlantis. So it shows you the dominion, which dominion also represents jurisdiction. It means authority to rule. Authority, right. That's what dominion means. It's the supreme authority to rule. So it does not just limit the Moroccan Empire to one country, one nation state. So once we go back to our Moorish flag, or the ancient Moroccan flag, once again, that didn't just represent the country or the kingdom known as Morocco. That embraced the Moroccan Empire as well. This is why it was important to understand the same chapter 47 demonstration extended across the Great Atlantic to the present North, South, Central America and what? The adjoining islands. What's so important about that, or what proof do we have to explain that? Because somebody might say, oh man, that's, that's a theory. Once again, that's that Drew Ali guy making stuff up. Somebody might try to say that to you. So now you got to be able to prove it outside of Drew Ali. This is where you become studious at. Because now sometimes you got to go outside of Drew Ali to, to state a claim. So it'll be looked at as a religious theory demonstration. So now that's when you have to, for proof on that, okay, well prove to me, if somebody say to you, a European, and somebody say to me, to you, well prove that the jurisdiction of the Moroccan Empire extends to America. Show me how the United States has any connection to that. Show me. What if a European say that to you? then you got to be able to go outside of Drew Ali and go into some type of historical uh, events, documents, laws, case laws, something to show that that's true. <laughs> and then just for a quick brief, not challenging anybody, but that's when you can use as one reference the, the, the tribute, the tribute that they owe to the Bays of Algier, all right? Also, you can use the tri Treaty of Tripoli. Also, you can use the letter that George Washington Treaty wrote. Treaty of Precept of our friendship and Treaty of Precept. Exactly, but the letter that George Washington wrote to the emperor is important because the emperor, once again, we're talking about the ruler of an em empire is known as an em emperor or empress. Empress if it's a female, right? That's where that terminology comes from. So when you say emperor of Morocco, in order for anyone to be an emperor or empress, that means that there must be an empire. Right. You can't be an emperor without having an empire. That's right. You understand that? So if George Washington is writing to his majesty, the emperor of Morocco, then he's acknowledging that there is a Moroccan empire that he is subject to. Well, you understand how you got to quickly be able to demonstrate that? Yes, sir. Islam, Sheikh. Yes, Islam. Can you, um, it is. Um, it is like enlightening that you mentioned about the empire um, before before the actual Moabites were even given permission. Um, um, the prophet explains it here in chapter 47. The inhabitants of Africa are the descendants of the ancient Canaanites. And the land and the land of Canaan are too says old man Cush and his family are the first inhabitants of um, Africa who came from the land of Canaan. His father Ham and his family were the Second, so that means during the time there was an empire, these are the two that was mm -hmm. that, that was operating under the 
the um, entire e e empire, the Moorish Empire. Mm -hmm. Then came, when it goes down to the, um, 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 it tells you that the dominion of Kush was northeast and southeast Africa. Mm -hmm. And northwest and southwest were his fathers. Mm -hmm. Then, in the later years of their brethren from Asia and Holy Land, and Holy Lands joined them. The Moabites from the land of Moab received their permission from the Pharaohs of Egypt to settle and inhabit Northwest Africa. And they were the founders and are the true possessors of the present Moroccan empires. Mm -hmm. Empires. Yes. Islam. So, once again, you know, including but not limited to chapter 47, helps you tremendously. And especially from understanding the geography, the history, and the law. Because that explains the law too. Yes. Even though it might sound like a good history lesson, mm -hmm. that explains your law. That's right. And not knowing that you can be a law man and study certain portions of law, but if you don't know that, then your law will be a little little cloudy. Because the the lawful status of a Moorish American is a different from the lawful status of another nationality here in America because the, the birthright inheritance is different. So that's why he said, come hear the truth about your nationality and birthright. You know, because your argument is going to be different from another nationality's argument. And that's the problem. We've been not just arguing wrong, but we've been being tried wrong. We've been being charged wrong. All because the birthright inheritance was not considered in the hearing. And it was waived. That's right. It, was, it wasn't challenged. And it was waived. And we acquiescing to the fact that they referred to us as Negro, Black, and Colored. We were treated and tried as slaves. That's right. Under the slave laws and the slave codes. That's right. All because we didn't know nothing about, not just our nationality, because you can know about your nationality or know what your nationality is. But if you don't know the birthright inheritance behind that and the laws behind that, right. then it doesn't matter. You just be saying my nationality is Moorish American and it still has no application in law because you don't know the law that goes with it. And that's what you see some of our brothers and sisters suffering from today. That's right. That they think just because they know what their nationality is or their free national name is, they think that that's the only thing that they got to satisfy in law and it's not. Until so they're tried unjustly and then they see that it didn't make no, make no difference on what they all, all assumed for all these years, then they realize the importance of knowing the birthright that comes with it. Yes. Islam. Islam. This is getting very interesting. It says, their dominion and habitation extend from northeast to southwest Africa, across the great Atlantis, even until the present north, south, and central America and also Mexico and the Atlantis Islands before the great earthquake which caused the great Atlantic Ocean. Mm -hmm. That's the perfect segue into letting them know exactly how far your your um how how far your heritage and 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 your empire extends. Mm. That's that there cannot be disputed. No. It can't, it can't be and, disputed. And even because if, even if they check their history and yes. go back they'll have to they were, that's right, they may mumble and you know what they do, they shuffle around, but it's true. Yes, and also to, for them to give honor and acknowledgement to the Bible as the greatest story ever told, the Bible also backs up chapter 47 and the whole demonstration about the flood. That's right. So they, are, they can't say that the flood is a theory. Mm -hmm if they proclaim or, or recognize Christianity or that's the right. Bible. That's right. You gotta bear witness the, to that. Biblios Heliotech, that's his actual name. It's not called the Bible. And these are natural disasters we're talking about. That's right. 
that, that took place that caused this to be. So once again, that's recorded. You know, so that will back you up from that perspective. Yes, yes, Islam. Mm -hmm. Like you said, Grinch, you have to notice. Yes, you have to notice. You, you have to know it. If you, and this is what the prophet meant, that if you're not going to be active, meaning to not just do a couple of things, but if you're not going to understand and interpret this the right way, then you might as well take off your card and button. Because it's not, it's not going to have any application with you. No. You know, and this is why it's so important that, you know, I keep stressing this, others stress it, the prophets stress it, that this is not something that you just embark on just for, you know, some information. This is something that you got to really follow. You got to live it. And be able to extract the information, interpret it the way he, he put it out there. That's right. No different from, it's a great example. We know that school like the Board of Education and modern day school system from K through 12 and even college, you know it's really based on training. That's it. It's really, small percentage of it is based on education. It's only education to train you to be a particular way. It's a programming to mold one to, to to serve a certain idea, I should right. say. Yeah. But even within that, if you go to school, they make sure that if you're there, the information that they're training you, the education that they're saying they give you, they're going to make sure that you know that. They're going to test you on it. They're going to quiz you on it. They're going to make it Paramount that you know what you're being told or being taught. So they want to make sure when you leave there, you can subscribe to that idea. Even in the falsehood that they got with it. They're going to make sure that everyone's studious. They're going to say, if you're taking up a seat, you got to listen. You got to be attentive. You got to do this. You got to do your homework. There's no exception. If you're here, then everybody has the same status. There's no, no exception to the rule. If you're here, then you must study, you must pass this test, this is what you do. If not, you're being left behind. Then they got other programs for you to try to get you up to speed. But the idea is to make sure everybody understands and is able to interpret what we're teaching them. That's the, that's the programming of school systems. Now, what I want to explain is that same approach has to be taken this way in the Moore Science Temple of America. That's why the Moore Science Temple was created. Because it's also trying to subscribe and program individuals to a certain idea. Just a positive one. That's the difference. It's programming and it's training. It has a Rotarian complexion. It's trying to do all of the above. But the, we have to take the same approach in this school referred to as the Moore Science Temple as other curriculums take in theirs. So if one is a member, if one is sitting in the seat of the Moore Science Temple, we have to make sure that every measure is taken where that individual is comprehending what is told to them. We have to make sure that each member is studying what they need to study and we make sure that if they are not, then their other meetings and other programs need to be taken and certain teachers that's best suitable for their growth need to be addressed to make sure that everyone is interpreting the lesson the way they need to. So the ultimate goal is for everybody to advance. And this is something that I see not being done in our more schools. Because we have people sitting down and we're saying the same thing for years and certain people are just not comprehending it. And we are pacifying it by keep going and assuming some people know things that they don't. Not just in the Moorish Science Temple, but whatever Moorish 
curriculum that they're a part of. You got Moors walking around that don't know certain things that's elementary that they're supposed to know. You know, so I'm only speaking with us. I only have the, the power and authority to try to address those who come here. Outside of that, I, I have no, no influence directly. I might have some, but not, not directly. So here, I can control the form, the, the teaching methods, and the way information is dispensed here. So I have to account for my own action here. So meaning that anyone sitting here, we gotta make sure that everybody understands. That's why we ask questions. But now if someone's not answering, then that shows the insufficiency of the information. So now it takes a collective input now from all of us to work on that. We can say, well, such and such is not getting it. We need to implement another class for this, another program for this. Uh, like even the church might have Bible study. You know, we can have Quran study. Just like we have law classes and stuff like that. You got to have other curriculums to make sure that people get it. Because for this period, the two hours that I'm demonstrating, I, I expect what I'm saying, because I'm, I'm, I'm staying within a certain level, referred to as first heaven. So what I do expect is everyone to be able to master first heaven. The only exceptions to that would be people who are new who don't know about their name and nationality, who is just coming in here to listen, to hear about it. But for those that's here, that we all should automatically know the same answer. When a question is asked, the same answer should be given. So we shouldn't have to go around the room on one question. Because once the first answer, the question is answered, that should be the one answer that everybody will have. That's why I always say come from the record. Meaning that what have you been instructed to say about that? So if someone asks you, why are you Moorish American? Although you might can say a bunch of things to explain it, you're instructed to say because I'm a descendant of Moroccan and I'm born in America. So everybody should already say it the same way. Same thing with the 101 questions and answers. We ask questions and people start answering different ways. That means that they're not studying their lessons. You know, so they don't have no time to be bored. People shouldn't say that they don't have nothing to do because I can show you plenty to do that you that you don't know that needs to be done. This is very important. And like I said, someone out in the street might not matter to them. And we have no control over that. But anyone within our camp, we gotta make sure that they know what they talk about. If they sitting here, we gotta know this got to know this and age level might be a factor but even for the children there has to be a curriculum for a child's level there's certain things that they have to know just like for example first question who made you everybody pretty much over the age of three should know that you know anybody who's able to say it if they can talk they should be able to say that so any Moorish American child over the age of three should know that and even the next one they should know the first seven just at that age level you follow what i'm saying so there's no excuse for an adult as a moorish american to not know the 101 because even at a child at the age of three they should know the first seven and if they're not then that means that they're not getting the right instructions you know, take the time and teach this to the little ones. That's your instructions. Teach these lessons to your little ones. You, know, you must know them yourself. You must study them yourself. So if I go to question number 96, you know, everybody should automatically know that. There shouldn't be no debate. And once you know them, then your job is to go and investigate why is that. Then you should know. I should. I asked a question about 1453 Byzantine, 
you should tell me about the event that occurred in 1453. Islam, what'd you say? Yes, absolutely, but that's a story that, that's, this is only giving you a reference. It's a quick brief to a bigger story that happened. You know, so, yes, that's the answer. But there's a story about about the, about the Byzantine Empire in 1453 that every more, once again, not every more because a baby might not know this, but after a while, you need to go back and study that. So however long it takes you to, under, to go and, like say for example, once you memorize the first 101 questions and answers, directly after that, you should go back to number one and find out why did Allah make you? Or how did he make you? You see what I'm saying? Why is the nearest place I can meet Allah in the heart? Let me get into the degrees of the heart. You understand? Go into it further and find out well, what's the significance of Allah meeting you at the heart? Where do they meet? How do they meet? What is that saying? That's what you do after you memorize them. You understand what I'm saying? Not just give me the answer and think that that suffices because that's still a lower level thinking. That's still a belief stage. We're, we're no different from believers if that's the only thing we can say. So, um, when you asked the question about the Byzantine era, that was during the time of the Crescent and Cross. Muslims and Muslims, Muslims and the Christians. That was when that was when the head of Satan, the head of Satan, is symbolic to uh, to the rules of the lower self being uh, uh, being finally subjected. Islam, Islam, brother Osman. What did you the time refers back to uh, I think it was Constantinople in Turkey, where. Rome has set, set up Constantinople and overtook the Ottoman Empire that was set up by Ottoman Bay. And, and Constantinople was supposed to be the new Rome. Then the Ottoman Empire built itself up and, and took the head off of Satan and, and overran the, and took that area over again. Yeah, yes, that's correct as well. That's the physical event story and what. Brother Shati gave was more of a metaphysical uh, story or event based on that. And they both apply. It's just two different levels or dimensions. And, and that's correct. And I wasn't really asking for no, I know. Some, someone said, to elaborate, which is cool. You said it. Yes. You said one should know it. Right? Yes. And so, so like, I mean, like if I had to get into a conversation about it, yes. I would be able to. Absolutely, because the history, once again, the, the status of us rides off of that. That's, right. That's why he gave it to you, right. as, as in your question and answers. Because it has everything to do with what you, you know, that's why you got to be, Brother Omar, not to call you out, but we had a conversation about this a while ago, uh, not, not too long ago, about the Black Fez. Because of the Black Fez has different interpretation different meanings and a lot of history behind it. One has to be careful and definitely have to be knowledgeable when one wear a black fez. A red fez too, not to discredit a red fez because they have two different meanings. Right. And some people say well black fez represent law and, and they're wrong. It, yes they're right, it does, but so does the red fez. Yeah, Let's get that straight. That's a cop out. Somebody said well black fez represent law or law giver. They're just being told that. Yes. But really, the red feds represents law too. So what? They both represent law. Now, where are you going to go with that? You understand? So there's events and histories that occur, just like the red feds, we say, derived from the bloodshed of the Moors. Okay, well, you need to know, well, what wars and how, what was the significance of the feds being dyed red, if you want to go with that story? You understand how we got to come out of the believer state? Same thing with the black fez. Well, what's the significance of why would they coin a black fez when they already had a red fez that represented something great and victorious? 
Because the Red Feds, you could say, did the same thing. You understand? The Red Feds was still a, re a result of war that our forefathers fought in battle. So that still deals with, for some people who want to say, well, that represents Mufti for a sergeant and all. The Red Feds still represents war or militant or m m military if you want to come from that perspective. So once again, you got to really go deeper into these things to really understand what you're talking about. And I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about in general because I hear this for years. You know, so once again, to even demonstrate a Red Fez or a turban, you got to have some type of history on the, the Byzantine Empire and the Roman Empire, Constantinople, right. the Moorish Empire, right. or the Moroccan Empire. You got to know the history behind these things because people who understand it from other levels, from a military perspective, might stop you and question you based on their understanding of it. They might look at it as a threat. They might still be emotional or take it personal based on their forefathers. Mm -hmm. Somebody might represent Rome and Khan. You don't, you don't, there's that's so right. many people out there. There's like you got people represent the KKK. They might not walk up. around with white sheets on, but they still descendants of the know. branch that do. Yeah, and they represent the Knights of so they might be KKK yeah, exactly. in disguise, and you, you don't know it. They might have another understanding on how their forefathers taught them about the Moorish Empire versus the Roman Empire. You don't know, never know where somebody coming from. They might be walking in plain clothes and got a, a bigger understanding than you and, and really might see you and want to do harm to you because they're thinking this group, that group, that cult, this, you never know. And if you're not prepared for even at minimum a conversation on the matter, you're in trouble. You're in trouble. You're not seeing it. And it's going to come a day where there's going to be some political ramifications behind this stuff. That's right. You know, so once again, we have an advantage right now that we have freedom to proclaim this and walk around and, and be confident about this with very little challenge to it. But there's going to come a day where you're going to be forced to know what you say you know. That's right and be who you say you are. There's gonna come a day. That's right. There's gonna come a day where we can't have no meetings no more. There's gonna come a day where you're not gonna have no physical documentation or no one to help you. So at that point, you gotta rely off memory bank. You gotta be in tune with your creator. You gotta tap into those degrees of the cherubim and the seraphim. You gotta tap into those lessons, physically and metaphysically, to in order to really be guided and have the proper defense behind it. And that's why you have to trace yourself backwards through the ages. For example, I mean, this is a high level outside of first heaven, let me just go there real quick. Meaning that you are who your forefathers are, right? We say that, right? Just, I'm just asking collectively, right? Yes, yes. All right, so now, someone can easily be the advocate and say, well, look, You know, you did some bad things during the Moroccan Empire. You killed 107 people. You know, and somebody might try to tell you who you were back then. If you have no idea who you were, you hit. Because they might remember who they were and remember you from a war that happened 2,000 years ago. That's a higher level, but it's relevant. Meaning that it's factual and it could exist. You understand because there's people out there who have became who they were before and really try are here to accomplish something that they couldn't finish in that day of time. So everybody has a different mission. There's different spirits here. There's, there's reoccurring for different missions. So you don't know what someone else's agenda is. So they don't tell you about this, but you hear all the stuff on the news about people who just walk into a building and start spraying and doing all of this. Law governs all events. Remember That's this. Right. Nothing happens by chance. No. So they're not going to really explain exactly why this person's motive is to do what it did. Like Colin Ferguson, they say got on the train and went on his killing spree. But understand, people don't understand what Colin Ferguson was dealing with, why he did that. That's a whole nother lesson that older Moors know the history behind that. 
but meaning that there's things that occur every day that if you're not in tune with the science you will be lost in why that occurred and that's to other people now if something occurs to you and you're lost not understanding who you were back then you wouldn't be able to explain what occurred to you now that's how you navigate so you got to be able to do what the prophet says trace yourself backwards through the ages and thus you know now it's not that easy don't get me wrong i'm not sitting up here saying that you can just go into your lesson you'll be able to do it like that and i'm not saying anybody who claimed to be in the attic chamber or anything else can do that either what i'm saying is what the prophet instructed us to do regardless of who's done it or if anybody ever done it i'm saying that's what the lessons say so i know that if the lesson sets a certain standard it got to be done if the prophet said it it could be done that's how Moorish Americans should, should think. That's right. If he said it, it could be done. It. So shall it be. Mm -hmm. And that's what John's reality was when you go into the lessons. Mm -hmm. When he found out the, 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 the secrets of, of washing, of the purity in life, right. he said, why need I wait? If, wash, if, if that's what washing does, then why need I wait? Why can't I go wash at once? Because he knew the possibilities the capacity right. of what he was being taught because the faith and the trust he had in his teachers. Right. Same thing with you. If you really subscribe and believe in Prophet Noble Jr. Ali and what he represent, then you should look at everything he taught you as a, a capacity that could be done. That's why it says man needs a pattern for his life because he loves to what? Follow and not, not to lead. Me. So it says Jesus lived to show the possibilities of man. That's why the record says what he said he done, he said all men can do. Who he is, all men are. It's exactly. To be. So that is the possibility of you. Right. Not just the possibility of him 2,000 years ago. That's the possibility of you. Right. So when you read the lessons, whatever is telling you that Jesus accomplished, forget the mystical story about him and whether he never lived or not. If you understand science, you know that it still could be done. Outside of what he said he was or who he said he was, because you get deeper into that, you'll understand that there were many people that, that went by the name of Jesus. Yes. And there, there's people that, and, and also that Jesus went by other names. That's right. That's right. And then you understand that that's just the language and the terminology 2,000 years ago, but you go into other time frames and that he was called by other names. So once again, that's once again just going into deeper into what we already have. If we don't know that, that means we're just still stuck on that level. We need to study so that we can go outside that level and then be able to say the same thing. Right. Sure. Being engaged in some in a conversation when someone wants someone somebody wants to talk Egyptology, commission science, whatever they call it, you should recognize your Quran as being the same thing. They're just talking another language because it's another time frame, but it's the same story. But now, if you don't know about their story, then they're going to feel like that they got jurisdiction over you because they're going to feel like you got a more, that they've got a more ancient source than you do. Then they're not going to feel a necessity to go into your lessons because they think their lessons supersede yours only because you didn't know their lessons. And that's what occurs every day every day. Islam? Islam. Any questions? Would anybody like to uh, give any suggestions pertaining to the subject matter of the education of our people and our children. Because the Prophet told us to send our children to Sunday school. Mm -hmm. And that's for a reason. You know, some of us might not have our children within our household to do that. 
some of us might not have children at all. Some of us might be children. But whatever the case may be, the necessity of the children being in Sunday school is necessary so that they can get the same teachings that I'm giving. So that they can eventually know this and be able to defend themselves. If not, you're always going to have to defend them. They can be an adult. And I know the other, for those of us who might have children that's adults already, you can relate to what I'm about to say. Children are not in Sunday school, don't really study this, but have got into some type of trouble. And what they do is call the parents to defend them and their adults. Because they don't know enough to defend themselves, so they got to call mother. They got to call father. Mm -hmm. And now they need assistance from the Moorish perspective to aid them in something that they got themselves involved in that That's they right. shouldn't have got themselves involved in. That's right. And that comes from them not studying and not understanding the lessons. Once again, that's not just their fault. We, as parents, still got to take a uh, certain responsibility for that. Yes. Because we're not following our instructions either and making sure that they attend their meetings and be industrious and become a part of, of the uplifting of fallen humanity. So if we don't teach them that, then that gives them the green light to go do something else. As long as they're under our jurisdiction, then that's the only time that you can watch the bent of their inclination is while they're with you. Once they're not with you, then there's a slim chance that they're going to follow this on their own. Yeah, that's true. So the only thing you can do is while they're with you, make sure that you just follow out the law. That's the only chance that they have. And it's for their own good. Even though they might not want it, but if they become stealing it, then it can save their life. Guide them. It, it can guide them and it can prevent them <clears throat> from from harm's way. This they will find them if 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 they don't deal with it. Hold, hold on, one so I this is not. Oh, oh, it's not. Oh, it's not. American, you want to speak up so everybody can hear the any, camera? I don't have any requirements that they, that they need you to have, you know, with having a, a, um, the patrons and stuff that they have the requirements. Mm -hmm. It's the first thing that they need to do. And, um, you know, I had to, I had to be a switch, and it's like, they're not going to accept it. That's what they're telling me, they're not accepting it, they're not accepting it. So once you once you speak a little knowledge to them and you know sometimes it might not happen and you have to try again and keep trying. And once, you know, you speak a little knowledge and uh keep trying, you know, you get you favorable you thought, you know, or my thing. It's not you know, and, and what are you saying for those who didn't hear? is Saheru, my son, 17 years old, <clears throat> went to the motor vehicle to get a state ID um, in New Jersey, here in New Jersey. And yes, but it's irrelevant. You know, the, the, the concept of what I'm making is basically based on a lesson. 17, is still considered a minor according to state's law. But he was forced to go get a state ID. I don't want to say forced, but in order to get certain things that he was trying to do, he had to get a state ID. So he went down to the Division of Motor Vehicles with his mother, you know, and he was forced to exercise this, what we're talking about, even though as a child he never really had to argue it because when he did go to school, you know, we would go down there and do certain things or get him 
and enrolled in school, whatever had to be done, usually the parents will have to do it for them. And this is what I'm saying. The child necessarily don't have to defend themselves until they get of age. But if you never put them in that situation to defend themselves and challenge them on what they know, then you won't know what they know. And when they need to know something, they might not know it. So he went down there and he bear witness what we usually go through all the time and what some of you more is actually going through now where you're trying to get your name corrected with state agencies and departments and you've been trying some people have been trying for years some people just came in have not tried yet but what i'm showing is 17 year old went down there just the other day and has the same stuff that everybody else has same documents same situation as us and went down there and requested a state ID and they gave him a slap some denied him and he was forced to demonstrate same day with the help of his mother though with the help of his mother he got a favorable reply and the state joined and gave him state ID with his mortgage appellation on it you know so I'm showing that for two different things to show the possibility of a child where all of our children should be enrolled in school under their Moorish names or whatever the situation may be. From that perspective, it's the parents' obligation to do those things, especially send them to school. They don't want the birth certificate. You already know how that go. You know, Medicare or health insurance, whatever the children has, it should be in their Moorish name. That's right. If we Moorish adults and we're straight, our children should be straight. You know, that's no excuse. Okay. And then also show the possibilities of if a 17 year old can do it, then an adult can do it. You know, so once again, there's all type of possibilities within this. He did it with the help of his mother. So if a, a woman can do it, another woman can do it. If a woman can do it, another man can do it. You understand what I'm saying? Where there's no excuses that uh, us more has come up with where they can't be done. There's, there's no excuses. You know, even though there might be, oh, yeah, they didn't want to do it, or, yeah, this obstacle is here, this obstacle. Yeah, we know about obstacles, but the obstacles are there for a reason. Just like man was formed in flesh for a reason. He had obstacles with that that we're going through every day. You know what I'm saying? Here he must tarry many ages till his lessons are all learned. You understand? So we got obstacles and, and temptations, manifold. But what the lessons say, we must overcome every one of them. So, in your path to regaining your nationality and your loss of state, you're going to have obstacles there. Don't look at this as it's supposed to everything. Like, people look at birthright as somebody owed them something. That just because they got conscious of their name and nationality, now everybody in the world owes them something. And they don't have any challenge that goes along with it. If they come here, you're supposed to give them this. They walk into the temple, you're supposed to just give them a nationality card. You're supposed to give them a document. You're supposed to do this. They go to the state agency. The state just supposed to just change their name without no hesitation. People come into this with the wrong idea. The lessons tell you if you just read, without a foe, a soldier never knows his strength. That's right. And what? Thought must be developed by the exercising of strength. So you expecting something without a challenge? That means you ain't reading. Or that means you're ignoring the lessons and you, you got some type of benefit. That's to say, I don't want to be held accountable to nothing. Just give me what I want. That's, that's what you're saying. So if you've been in this a year, two years, three years, and you still walking around with slave tags and stuff adjoined to your name, we don't want to hear it. You're not applying the lesson, and you're not with us from the perspective on what the goal is. With us, all members must proclaim their nationality. So once again, there's no excuses for a child. If you're five years old, there's certain things you're supposed to know at five years old. Let's just keep it real. We got to raise that standard. There's certain things that they, they shouldn't know at that point, and we don't hold them to that. But at five years old, there's certain things they're supposed to know. 
and whatever we feel that is, you know, we make we should make sure that every five year old in our community know what they're supposed to know at five years old. If they're ten years old, then it, it enhances. Whatever we say that they should know at ten, we should make sure if they ten, they're supposed to know this. If they don't, then we need to challenge them and make sure that they do, and take certain things from them until they learn what they're supposed to know at ten years old. If you 30 years old, if you 40 years old, if you 50 years old, then we should hold everybody accountable to what they should know at that age or that level or that degree or rank that they may hold. That's all? That's all. That's all. Uh, but I was about uh, to say, in conjunction with what you're saying, is by these lessons you can set your house in order mm -hmm. and your children will learn. Love instead of hate, yeah. and I was going to add was what and you was talking about, mm -hmm. even with me. And to the present day, I'm still getting flack from the social security office, but they don't want to do this. And that's no problem. I want to get everything else in my application, you know, lawfully, mm -hmm. and come in uh, to the post office. Now, the next time I go there, then I have a, 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 a legit challenge to them. I didn't go in the news paper like they asked me was that that wasn't necessary. Yes. But I went to like on all my check stubs that has my L on it. Everything else is my L everything I do business in. I don't do business under that particular name that they want to call me. I mean no, that's not who I am. Yes, it's you know, not. It, it has been amended, not changed. Correct. Amended means that means I I I have I have taken it to uh, um, another uh, degree. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It's long. And, and also, in reference to that, by us being active, like say if there's certain things we haven't got done yet, and certain things we don't know, just remember this. No man listens to himself. That's right. So those who stay away from home, meaning that those who don't come to the temples, don't go to your meetings, don't communicate with Moors too much. Of course, you got to understand there's going to be a lot of things you don't know because certain things you don't even get from just reading the lessons or just studying on your own. Certain information you get just from being hands-on. That's right. Just being around Moors who are active and is doing things. And if you're not communicating with Moors like that, then that means you're not getting challenged. If you don't have conversations on the phone with other Moors, then you, there's no one to challenge you. If you're just coming to a meeting and listen to the meeting for two hours, and no one's challenging you personally, then you're never being challenged. That's not good for your group. You know, so you need to be in curriculums and, and areas where people are going to sharpen your sword. They're going to test you. That's right. You know, you got different tests come from your own, your own people, come from not your own people, Europeans, state government agencies. You got tests that needs to come from many different levels. That's right. And if you're not dealing with any of them, then you're never being tested. Mm -hmm. So you're just saying you know something, but really, how do you know you know it if you haven't been challenged? <laughs> you don't even know that you know it. You think you know, but you really don't. You really don't know that until you get put in that situation where you got a challenge. Somebody in front of you telling you you're not Moorish American. Not just somebody in the street. I'm sure you get challenged from that perspective. Somebody who referred to themselves as black. You always got to argue with somebody about being black. But that's a lower level demonstration. You know what I mean? If you know who you are, you know you're Moorish American. You believe chapter 47 and all of that. And all of this is factual to you. Take it to where somebody really going to challenge you with it. That's why the prophet says, go to City Hall. Question them on that. That's right. Ask the officials in your government. Mm -hmm. That's your next level of challenge once you think you know. When you, can, when you get past your people in your neighborhood, your family members, once you can get past them, and then you want to start testing this on a high level, Go to the officials and your government. Start talking to them. Don't mean do a crime and challenge them. No. Just mean you can intellectually challenge them. That's right. 
Just like Brother Amari talking to the uh, the state trooper in the barber shop. He wasn't doing a crime and got challenged. See, some people only force it. Some people do wrong, right? And when they do wrong, they're forced to demonstrate at that point because they're trying to get a lesser charge. Don't. That's not the way to go about it either. But you could be out being peaceful, minding your own business, living a life of love, truth, peace, freedom, and justice. You still got an obligation to other forms of life, other people. This brother right. stopped the state trooper because he heard the state trooper saying something that was incorrect. So he challenged the state trooper on his understanding of the law. You know, he wasn't doing nothing wrong. He could have said, well, that's a cop. I ain't trying to trouble myself with that. He ain't talking to me, so I'm going to keep rolling. He could have took that approach, but he didn't. The cop could have, it could have turned out different. The cop might have said, who does God want to challenge me? You know what? Let me check you out. What's your name? You know what? I'm locking you up. The cop could have took that approach just out, out of ego or being mad, but he didn't because of the approach that he came at. You know, a lot of Moors don't get, they're not that favorable in their conversations with people. I've seen them. Seen people didn't know how to talk to a law enforcement officer, and, and I've seen people get hurt behind it. Hurt. Physically hurt. Because they just didn't know how to talk. Not that what they were saying was wrong, just they, they didn't know how to talk. And that can get you in a lot of trouble. It's very hard to get, get out of, not knowing how to talk. You can be wrong, and if you know how to talk, sometimes right. you can get out of it. You get out of it. That's right. you know, that's why the prophet says, speak in, in an intelligent tone. Intelligent. But to mm -hmm. talk intelligent, you have to have intelligence. intelligence. Right. Exactly. That's right. why, that's our job. We have to teach intelligence. intelligence. Right. So here we build character. Mm -hmm. And when we build character, mm -hmm. that helps you be intelligent. Where you can speak intelligent. Yes, Establish intelligence to speak intelligent. That's right. Islam? It, 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 Islam. Islam. I want to yes. share this little incident. There was an incident when I was wrong. I had left the temple mm -hmm. um, that particular Sunday. I got home, but when I got up to the train, I had to go to the bathroom really, really bad. I couldn't hold it, mm -hmm. but, but it was dark. So I couldn't make it around the corner. So I, I said, um, stop a lot, and I did my thing on the side of the wall. I saw the DTs coming up, but I couldn't stop. So they stopped, and they got up. I said, yes, I know I'm wrong, sirs, but I couldn't hold it no more. I like apologize. Mm -hmm. So, but there was one of them. He was being nasty on purpose of he saw me wearing a black vest. Mm -hmm. So he said, "What's that on your head?" And I, I, I answered him. He says, "I don't care. Stand up." And he put the cuffs on me. So he says, "Well, what's what's in your briefcase?" I says, "Well, um, I said, um, I said my combination is um, universal, sir. You should know it." So he said, "Well, I need you to open it." I said, well, sir, I can't open it with, with my hands behind my back. Well, I'm not going to take the cuffs off. So in, in, anyway, I whispered it um, to his his other officer. He went and opened it, opened it up, and he saw the, um, he saw the certificate and stuff like that. And um, he says, okay. So he closed it, and he took the cuffs off me. Said, Normally, when they put the cuffs on you, you're going. Mm -hmm. They don't cuff you unless they take you took the cuffs off him right there in the street. And he said, listen, all right, you go next time, you know, try to make it home, even if you're doing it yourself a little bit. Yes, sir, thank you, officer. Mm -hmm. Now, what if I had came out the opposite? I would be in the precinct, I would have been locked up, I would have been humiliated. Mm -hmm. But I knew I was wrong. But I acknowledged my wrongness from the time they got out of the car, I just couldn't turn around. So I said, listen, I, I was talking to them the whole time, but. He wanted to play, he wanted to see, was I going to lose my cool or get upset? But I didn't because I knew what I doing. Mm -hmm. That's knowing how to speak. Because mm -hmm. they look for controversy, this is what they do. Mm -hmm. One time they stopped me and Sheik I mean, the same cop from Sheik I mean, checked him one night. And they all got in the car and, and pulled off with the same officers, remembered his, his, um, his conveyance. And they came through my block and they all came in. SWAT team. And I had on slippers at the time. I was sitting inside, um, he was speaking with him. 
So I got out of the car, you know, to go around. So I got, got in my face, this close. Get the ass out of my face! So I just looked at him and you know, So I mean, so it's things that you have to know not to react to. Because you know? mm -hmm. had I did this one thing, he just made a movement. Mm -hmm. They didn't pounce on him. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Alright, Islam. Islam. That's going to conclude today's lesson. In harmony and spirit with the proclamations to be read, trust that you read them on your own. And uh, give an honors to all the Moors and the Muslims who participate in the Ramadan. Ridding their body from toxins and evil thoughts and low self temptations and cravings and sugar. It's wrong. ETC, you know, give an honor to you for your effort. And hoping that it will create a more peaceful environment, starting with the household and with self. It's wrong. It's wrong. So we rise and give praise by reciting our Moorish American prayer. We'll ask Sheik as Nika to close out. Islam. May Allah. By our hearts and minds. Thank our ancient forefathers. The divine freedom principles. This we ask. In our holy name. In the seven year old heat. Amen. Islam. Meeting is now closed. Thank you, brothers and sisters, for peace and love.